Is this on? Can they hear me? Is this on? Yeah. Hey guys. Is that coming through? I feel like it's not. But they can hear? Okay. Hey guys, thanks for coming to this talk. Um, I'm going to be presenting on AI crypto and uh, really talking about the, the kind of fundamental underpinnings of this space and, um, and really giving a kind of a 30,000 foot overview of, of why I find this space so interesting and why I'm working on, on this company Ritual, which I'll also go into uh, later on in the, in the talk. So the motivation here is AI is eating the world. Um, from education to media, defense, art, culture, and the usage of these products have gone up pretty significantly in the last uh, in the last year. And the you know you could think of it as the intelligence quotient for AI has gone up pretty dramatically in the last year. So what are the problems of AI today? One is that the infrastructure is highly centralized. Model storage, governance, ownership, compute is all run by a couple of large corporations and a couple of large cloud providers. The AI infrastructure is also highly permissioned. There's high costs to using it. It's permissioned. There's no privacy or computational integrity and a lot of geographical limitations. Then finally, it's becoming increasingly regulated. Incumbents and governments are trying to jam a bunch of um, rules and regulations into the works and make it difficult for new players to come into the market and, uh, and, and innovate. So what is the future impact of this? AI is going to be inserted into every technology product in the world over the next 10 years. And with that, with this centralization backdrop that I just described, censorship and ma manipulation will take place for sure. And LLMs and, and other foundation models are creating these highly engaging new forms of, of um, you, know, you could call it propaganda or, or social control in some ways. It's already being used in the 2024 US election media and different sort of governmental bodies. And so the people that control the capital distribution and access to models really control a lot of social influence with this technology. So the open and transparent governance of AI models is key and very, very important. A good analogy to describe what's happening today with AI is very similar to what happened with cryptography in the 90s. In the 90s, there was almost uh, a rule placed that the export of cryptography would be treated as ammunition, you know, as effectively as a weapon. And obviously, we you know, now know that's sort of a free speech thing. And I think we're seeing very similar parallels here with AI and the government trying to say, you know, we should control it or people that we pick should control models instead of open and transparent governance. So this is where AI crypto comes to the rescue. Crypto has given us these great tools for self-sovereignty, privacy and computational integrity that bridge these trust assumptions around different modes of compute. We get great coordination and incentive engineering, and we also get open infrastructure that catalyzes and, and sort of uses and kind of promotes this credible neutrality. Crypto AI takes this high level of centralization and turns it into a, into a decentralized one. We've decentralized money and art and IP and storage, and, and why not AI? It's a, it's a massive innovation and it, and it should be decentralized and deserves to be. So this is where Ritual comes in. Ritual is really aiming to be the convergence point of crypto and AI. The task that we're trying to solve is we want to make AI highly accessible for a crypto native audience. We want to make it very easy for crypto developers to utilize AI in their applications. We view AI and crypto as having these, these sort of bilaterally beneficial relationship that AI can help crypto and crypto can help AI. And I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more um, in, in the next couple slides. So we want to create a whole new class of AI enabled dApps and use this cryptographic financial and, and sort of coordination primitives from crypto in the AI supply chain. So Ritual is being built out in two phases. The first phase is called Infernet. Infernet is a decentralized Oracle network that is optimized for AI. It's now live. And we built an application called FriendRug, which I will uh, show what that is in a, in a second. And you can actually set up a node today. 
The idea with this is we have an off-chain compute network that any blockchain can tap into and call inference, fine-tuning, quantization of models in their application directly. The second phase is called ritual chain. It's a sovereign chain that's EVM compatible. It has a, a custom VM that is purpose-built for AI native operations. that will enable a whole new class of crypto dApps to use it. This is just a quick kind of overview of the, the kind of setup we have today, where we can plug into different, different environments, different layer ones and layer twos. And it's sort of all powered by this, this AI setup that we have with these AI-enabled um, um, precompiles. So what's on Ritual today? Ritual in, Ritual's infranet already supports taking AI models and putting them into applications with the additional option to add in integrity proofs uh, of various forms, ZK or, or optimistic. So any EVM compatible chain can use the Ritual SDK to coordinate this work. Ritual chain, the next iteration of this, is a set of stateful precompiles that make AI operations natively accessible to any developer with just a few lines of code. What this means is AI models are a first-class citizen in, in this network. And really, the, the AI model is the atom of this network. And you can iterate and do operations on, on top of that. We have a proof marketplace that allows users to express their preferences for different guarantees around privacy. Say, for a DeFi use case, you may really want strong integrity, and you'll want to use a ZK solution. Maybe for, if you're building a, um, you know, a social application, maybe you don't care about integrity, and you want to go with something weaker. So we want the option for our users to be able to pick whatever type of integrity that they would like uh, through this proof marketplace. And then we have a modular stack that allows us to plug into any decentralized model storage layer and uh, use interop solutions to plug into, uh, into various different chains. So this is you know, not just an Ethereum thing, although it's sort of starting on it. And you can develop natively on the ritual chain or on your own chain. We're, we're not picky about where the apps are built. We're really just excited to have this technology used everywhere. So what are the pillars that we're trying to go for here? One is censorship resistance and decentralization. Can everyone in the world access these models? Can developers build products where they aren't worried about losing access to models? Privacy and integrity. Do you have trust that the inputs, models, and outputs are staying private? And you know, can you make sure that the output generated by a model wasn't tampered with during the whole process? And this is really where the cryptography of this, this whole network comes in. And finally, the, the blockchain sort of incentives part is you can really now incentivize the entire ML stack and offer these, these sort of token-based rewards for contributing to a model, or doing governance on a model, or on the labeling side of things, or on the compute side of things. So there's really a lot of ways to program new incentives for new applications at various levels of the stack. And uh, we think end users should be, should be rewarded for contributing to these networks. It's something you don't get in, in Web2 AI today. So a question a lot of people ask is, what are the applications of, of AI crypto? And, and we think there's a ton of really interesting ones. And I'll go through a couple that, that we're thinking about pretty actively. One is DeFi with models in the loop. So going in, instead of using human governance and having to go convince a couple of people off chain to vote yes, and having them to vote on every single decision that the DAO does, you can now instead do automatic parameterization via, you know, via DeFi model. That's pretty powerful. You can do it for, for lending. You can do it for yield generation. Next is around gaming and entertainment. So there's a ton of interesting live projects that are using on-chain incentives to build creator economies around AI NPCs and owning AI models that you know, play on-chain games and win rewards and, and things of that nature. So it's really this highly sort of generative thing that you can build with these different types of AI models. Content and media, this one is pretty straightforward. Being able to autonomously generate new types of works, whether it's video, audio, text. And it allows really anyone to become a creative. And you can pair that with the benefits we get of, of things like NFTs, being able to create subscriptions and ownership. It's a really, really powerful primitive to be able to combine together. And finally is governance. So automatically generating proposals, natural language interfaces, and, and a whole bunch more. So these are just a few, but we think there's a lot of really exciting things going on in this space. 
So what is crypto-enabled AI? Uh, crypto-enabled AI gives you a couple of interesting properties. You get these cryptographic and game-theoretic primitives for AI, plug and play of different types of proofs, and giving various sort of guarantees. Data provenance, so creating incentives around rewarding contributors for data, for fine-tuning and training and, and RAG. And incentives, enabling users to contribute and be rewarded for it, in addition to you know, allowing other users with capital to crowdfund models, which we think is a really big, exciting thing. And then finally is governance. Model preferences, collectively curating prompts, and a whole bunch more. So this is a quick case study um, that, that you guys should all check out. What we did is we created an on-chain smart agent, and this is a few months ago, that buys and sells friend tech keys. So instead of it being a human behind the friend tech bot or behind the friend tech account, um, it is a bot. It's an LLM that's running on top of Infernet. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to convince the LLM to buy or sell your shares. So it's kind of a fun, almost like a word puzzle that you can go and, and try. And it's fully open source. It's built on Infernet. It also uses Ezekiel proofs to, you know, with a classifier to basically be able to prove the integrity of the, the action. And uh, we released a website called friendrog.com that you can check out more about the process and sort of the build out of this. So this is one of the first things we built on, on Infernet, and many, many more things will be com coming out over the next few weeks, both by us and partners, but also through the community uh, in our Discord. So we have a bunch of open research directions, and we're really excited to collaborate with people. Open model governance and ownership, proofs of compute, privacy improvements, open and transparent foundation models, incentives and game theory optimal compute routing, data retrieval and provenance, autonomous agents, and, and a whole bunch of others. I could have you know, three slides on, on stuff that you know, we're excited about and want to, want to collaborate on. So how can I participate? So an easy way is to run an infranet node. If you go to our website, it's fairly easy. You don't need a GPU. There's many tasks that you, you don't need one for. You can build on our network, and we're, we have a Discord we just announced a few days ago. So you can go there, ask questions. The developers on our team will go and, and answer them for you and, and help you if, you if you need help with building. Uh, DApps that are bu being built on Ritual, several of them will be announced over the next couple of weeks. And you can actually start using AI on chain, which is, it hasn't really been the case so far. And more ways that are coming out soon. So that is it. Thank you, guys. And, um, more information if you want to contact us or, or learn more about what we're doing.